Adobe Substance might be the most satisfying app I've ever worked with. After Blender, of course. Mostly because of its layer system and how you can easily mix up materials and textures together. For example, if you want to create anything close to that in Blender, you have to go to Shading tab, add a shit ton of mixed shaders, mapping, texture coordinates, and a lot of other different things. And if you're not familiar with the whole material node system, it can get really confusing real fast. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can turn your Blender into some sort of substance where you can easily make textures and materials with only a few clicks. But before moving forward, as always, make sure you check out my Gumroad and Patreon page to download all the 3D files and real-time process videos of making the characters from the channel. Everything is in there. Without further ado, let's turn Blender into a texturing beast. First, go down to the description and open up the link to the Gumroad. Here you can see all of its features and things it can do. It's really good. You can do all sorts of texturing with it. From the right side, you can choose the option you want. The free one is called Light. Enter zero on the price to get it for free. But if you want to support the creator, you can enter more. Also, by buying the paid version, you get access to way more options and some crucial features that are not available in the free version. I'm going to show you later. After downloading it, go to Edit, Preference, Add-on, and click on Install. Find the archive you just downloaded and click on it. Enable the add-on. And if you press N to bring out the menu, it should appear on the right side of your screen. Click on it. At first, it needs you to save your project. So do that, then select an object you want to assign the material to. Now it should say there is no active material. So click on reset material. After that, we can begin. From here on out, it gets more and more similar to Adobe Substance. First, we got the material section where we can change the name of the material or add new materials. To add a new material, you can simply click on this icon and it keeps adding new material whenever you click on it. You can switch between the materials from here. Moving on to the toolbar in the bottom, we got a lot of options here, but most of them are locked. One reason is that we don't have any layer, so let's click on add layer, but as you can see, a lot of them are still locked. That gets us to the second reason, which is this being a free version. These features are only available in the paid version, but as always, I'm gonna keep the video on the free side of things. Cause let's be honest, most of you are probably students and broke as shit. Here we have the layer section. It almost looks like Photoshop, so if you're familiar with that, you should be good here. The dot on the left side indicates which layer you're working on right now. You can switch between the layers by clicking on it. The eye icon is the visibility of the material, so you can turn that layer on or off by clicking on this icon. Next we have the name and color of the layer to organize the layers a bit more, so we don't get confused. After that we can move the layers off up or down using these two. Here we got toggle for mask, which enables and disables masks. And at the end, we got opacity, just like Photoshop, where you can change the visibility of each layer by changing the values of this one. It's also draggable, so you don't have to enter the value each time. In the bottom, we got few options that I'm gonna get into one by one. First one is layer settings, where we do most of our work. In the material library, you can bring your PBR material. If you don't know what a PBR material is, it's a short for physical base rendered materials. It means all of those materials you see where they have multiple maps containing diffuse, normal maps, roughness, and other stuff. You can get these maps for free from Blender Kit, Polyhaven, or any other place you want. Once you get all of your textures, all of the maps should be in the folder. Back to Blender in the channel section, enable any of the maps you have in that folder. In this case, we got base color, metallic, roughness, normal, and displacement. Enable them and click on PBR setup. Select all of the maps in that folder and open them up. It automatically detects the maps and place them here. It also fixes the color space so you don't need to do anything. First thing we have is the mapping UV, which you can change the scale of the texture and the position, or even change the UV map that assigned to the texture. But you can also manually adjust or change them completely. On the top we got the blend mode, just like Photoshop with the same options. Really, really useful to mix textures. We also have another opacity to adjust. First enable the eye icon, then you can drag the opacity. This comes in handy in a lot of situations, like decreasing the rusted look or dirt. If you want to change the texture, you can easily do that by clicking on this tree line icon on the right side of the opacity. Then you're greeted with these three options, image, RGB, value, and vertex color. Image is when you want to replace it with another image texture. You can simply create a new texture using this plus icon, or open a new texture. Another really cool thing here, 
is this brush icon. This activates the texture and you can immediately start painting. No need to switch to painting mode and select the image you want to paint on. It literally does all of that with one click. RGBs when you only need colors instead of images. Once you click on OK, you get a color picker in the menu and you can easily change it. And value is obviously gives you a value option between 0 to 1, just like roughness and other things. Another useful tool here is on the right side. When you click on the monitor icon, it will only show that specific texture on the viewport, not anything else. This way you can easily edit this texture since you don't see anything else other than the texture you're working on. After you were done with edit, you can click on the same icon to see the full shader again. In the bottom, obviously we have the regular settings, like the color space and other things. We can also add extra filters to these textures, which unfortunately is only available in the paid version. Same thing goes for the filter settings. Once you buy it, you get access to all of those things. Next tab is really important, which is mask settings. This is where we can add a mask to our texture to make some parts transparent or see-through. One use case, for example, is that you can add a clean metal PBR material in the first layer. And for the second layer, add an old rusted metal. Now we can click on add mask in the mask settings, then click on the image, add a new black texture, then pick up a white brush and start painting the parts we want to rust it. It's literally that easy. It's good for a lot of things, screws, bricks, buildings. You can use it basically anywhere to add a rusted look to your materials. We also have the UV mapping option here as well. So we can change the position or use a separate UV map for the main texture and the mask, which is really cool. After that, we got a vector tab and bake settings, which is only available on the paid version. But you can do all of that inside Blender, so don't worry. After we're finished with the material we built, we need to do this part manually. So select your model, add a new image texture in the shading tab, go to render settings, and under bake, turn off direct and indirect option. Choose your bake type and press bake. Now it should combine all of the things you made so far in that image texture. Do that for all of the maps from diffuse and roughness all the way to normal map. We can get rid of the old material and connect the new maps to the shader. Now it can be used anywhere like Unity, Unreal Engine, whatever you want. And finally at the end we got material settings, which is our normal settings for materials like the subsurface settings, IOR, emission, and all of those other things. So that was basically it. We now have the most important tools from Substance Painter in Blender. If you have experience with Substance, you can probably get comfortable with this one really, really fast. Best practice would be just messing around with the settings and make some random textures. In the next video, I'm going to show you how I made this jacket fully in Blender and how I textured it using these free add-on and free textures. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and stick around for the next video. Make sure you check out my Gumroad and Patreon page to download all the 3D files and real time process videos of making the characters from the channel. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one. Peace.